Until we actually realize the burden that is caused by school lunches and how the government doesn't affect us, we are never able truly to actually diminish it. Using four articles, four interviews, as well as a Google survey of our local residents, we are actually able to gather enough evidence to push a solution. Using the solution, or as well as arguments, we're able to show or provide a possibility to the outcome of school lunches in the future. In order to gather our study, we asked about 58 people in our local area about school lunches in the United States. Our first question was, how often do you consume food provided by the school? About 26% said four to five times a week, and the other 10% asked, answered two to three times a week. Our second question was, what kind of food does your school provide for lunch? About 81% said prepackaged food, while the other 19 said homemade food. The third question was, are you aware that school lunches contain high levels of trans saturated fat? 51% said yes. And our last question was, are you aware that poor nutrition may harm the ability of students to learn at a pace necessary for school success? About 70% said yes. So what we are finding is that people are aware and are still eating the school's lunch. lunch. Instead of eating the school's lunch. The school's lunch really is not that good. It doesn't look that good either. And a cup of noodles are a lot better. <laughs> All right, Ashley Nicole Emerson. Did you know that school's lunches are processed food packets with high fat and salt? I did not. To further push our evidence, in an article titled, How the Quality of School Lunch Affects Students' Academic Performance, by Michael L. Anderson. She says, to determine the quality of different private companies, nutritionists at the Nutrition Policy Institute analyze the school lunch menus offered by each company. The nutritional quality of the menus was scored using the Healthy Eating Index, also known as HEI. The HEI is a continuous score ranging from zero to 100 that uses a well-established food component analyze and analysis to determine how well food offerings or diets match the dietary guidelines for Americans. The HEI is the Department of Agriculture's preferred measure of diet quality, and the agency uses it to examine relationships between diet and health-related outcomes. And to assess the quality of food assistance packages, menus, and the U.S. food supply, the average HEI score for the U.S. population is 68.8, while the HEI score in our study is 59.9. In other words, a typical private company providing school lunch in California is a bit less healthy than the average American diet, meaning that the actual American diet which consists of high levels of sodium and fat, are actually more healthy than an actual school lunch. Now we're going to pass it over to Brian, who's going to talk about how healthier lunches cost schools, and as well as him interviewing an actual Kaiser employee. Cool. Healthier lunches costing schools, some students more, by Margot Rulich Kissel, who works with the Dayton Daily News in Ohio, says... Paula Montgomery, a child nutrition services supervisor for Fairborn City Schools who has been in the business nearly 25 years, said on occasion her fresh fruit can cost more to serve than the main entree these days. So here, what Paula Montgomery is saying is that when trying to give the kids healthier foods and fresh fruit, for example, it's costing more to serve than the chicken they give them or the pizza they give them. So much of this is caused because of price and what our schools are being given to us is that they are only thinking about price and not thinking about the health and the benefit of the children. So would you mind telling us what exactly you do for a living? Um, I'm a family physician and Kaiser permanent. And of course, so as a family physician, you see a lot of young, young children, don't you? Yes, I take care of uh, the whole gamut of people. Kids um, and adults as well. Do any of them have like high obesity problems or stuff like that? It's actually a, a big problem. Um, not only are we seeing a, a very high number of kids with obesity, um, but we're also seeing type two diabetes even in elementary school age children. Well, I see a lot of schools that, um, well, a lot of lunches that they have at our schools now is like teriyaki chicken, burgers, uh, corn dogs, nachos. Um, those don't seem to have very high nutritional value, would you say? Yeah, no, they're not. They're, those are all high in fat and high in salt as well. So, what do you think a healthy diet should consist of instead of what the school systems are giving us? Well, uh, research has shown that uh, a plant-based diet is the healthiest for most people. 
and that means eating more vegetables and that doesn't mean eating lettuce you know uh, which has actually pretty low nutritional value it means eating uh, vegetables rich in, in vitamins and nutrients such as spinach you know broccoli um, those sorts of things so you definitely have what our school systems are giving us with that affect how people like students and also athletes perform? Uh, certainly. So as far as uh, student performance, when you eat a high fat diet or actually a high calorie diet in general, whether it be from carbohydrates or fat, um, it raises what, what's called your insulin level, right? And I think most people have experienced that feeling when you eat too much and then you feel sleepy, you know, half an hour, an hour later. That's because your insulin levels rose, and then you stop eating, and then paradoxically, your sugar actually goes a little bit lower, so you feel sleepy because your body expects more calories. That in itself can affect the performance. You're not alert, um, and uh, as far as sporting events, you won't perform well. Just as heard in the last interview, we asked, do school lunches contribute to childhood obesity? This is an article titled by Dan Whitmore, in which he says, in a simple look at the data, students who eat school lunches are more likely to be overweight than their classmates who brown bag their lunch. She also said students are more likely to be obese and weigh more if they're income eligible for reduced price school lunches. Meaning that people who eat school lunches are more likely to be obese. This is actually proven in her latest interview, as well as um, people who are income eligible, meaning that they do not have enough money to to have school lunch or to pay for a regular school lunch that get it for free are actually more eligible to be obese. Now we're going to pass it on to Thurston Smith and his interview. This is Thurston Smith. This is Mr. Chicano. And we're here to discuss how we're going to fix school lunches and improve nutrition guidelines. What do you think are the good and bad things about school lunches here at King High School as far as nutrition guidelines go? Uh, well, I feel as if it gives students something to eat, which is better than nothing. Um, and that they do a fairly good job of covering all their bases and getting all of the food groups into those trays. Um, but like I said, it's not the most appetizing looking tray of food. What do you think of the cost of production put into our school lunches and how does it affect our students? I'm not exactly sure when it comes to dollars and cents how much it costs per unit per student lunch. Uh, but I'd imagine that the cost that goes into it isn't as high as people would think that it is. The National School Lunch Program, the authors of the U.S. Department of Agriculture Food and Nutrition Services. This quote and report represents and presents findings from the access evaluation, a study component that is designed to assess the potential impacts of direct certification Medicaid on the students' access to free school lunches by conducting re retrospective simulations of the DCM in school year 2011-2012, the year before the de demonstration began. They found out after the, after the demonstration that not as much money was spent on school lunches and they were very unhealthy and they often weren't very w included. They didn't really include vegetables and they weren't very positive on the kids' diets and they affected how their performance in school. So after the, after this demonstration took place, they often used budget cuts and they often place more they often place more money into school lunches and need to spend more time and money as a whole making school lunches more healthier to provide better food for students so they can have a better performance in school as a whole. Can you tell everybody who you are? Mrs. Temple, and I teach government economics and AP microeconomics. I don't know if it's oranges or cuties or bags of carrots that I see just being left. Right. Would vegetables, if it were traded for a different vegetable, would it be eaten? Right. So you, it could be blamed on the, the I mean, kids as well. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because they're, right. they're, they're, they are offered. It might not be the vegetable of their choice yeah. because... There's no way that, let's say, figuratively speaking, that you can, let's say, even half of our population, 1,500 students, buy lunch at school from the cafeteria. Um, there's no way that you can make all 1,500 people happy. And, but the health of the students in regards to their lunches, um, but they just have to follow the law. So if a fresher option is more expensive, and the government isn't providing additional money to help that, That's where then there's not gonna be a change. Mm -hmm. But the law has to change mm -hmm. in order for the schools to follow that law and then potentially petition or ask for more money. In essence, what we found with our four interviews as well as our four articles is that a proper solution 
is actually to target the way people think. As much as we advertise for unhealthy foods, we advertise for healthy foods in order for students to actually more lean into that, as well as for the government to actually sort of regulate and provide legislation to actually change the way that food is provided for the school. Unless we have these two, the only thing we have really left is our voice in order to change the government. Thank you, and I hope you guys enjoyed.